Hey everyone, thanks for joining today's webinar. Is promoting dentistry to your clients like pulling teeth? Maybe your branding stinks. Co-sponsored by Betstoria and Pet Desk. With Dental Month just around the corner, we are super excited to have Rhonda Bell here today to share her expertise and help you effectively communicate with your clients regarding their pets, dental health. Real quick, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Ashley Cole. I'm a former veterinary technician with over five years of experience in the industry. And here at Pet Desk, I am building a community of veterinary professionals and thought leaders to fuel important discussions and increase awareness around the important topics affecting our industry. In case you are familiar with Pet Desk, we're a client engagement tool focused on helping clinics like yours guide clients to better care. Our platform and mobile app streamlines communication with your clients, therefore reducing workload and saving time for everyone in the clinic. As someone who previously managed my clinic's former social media, I am super excited about this webinar. I cannot wait. So I'll pass it over to Vicki from Betstoria, but due to some technical difficulties, she's going to be dialing, dialing in from Judy's phone. So stay tuned. Um, I'm Vicky, um, which is another bit of irony when the technology fails and we're doing a technology webinar, but uh, there we are. Um, I'm a registered veterinary nurse in the UK with over 13 years of experience. Here at Betstory, I lead a team of product experts in, in implementation where we onboard clinics across the world. We're incredibly passionate about supporting <clears throat> excuse me, veterinary professionals utilise technology to reduce burnout and provide a convenient service to your pet carers. If you're unfamiliar with Vector, we were a vet tech company that was founded by two vets, both called Julian and an engineer called Zamji. We offer real-time online scheduling and it integrates with your practice management system so that appointments land directly in your schedule. And currently we support over 3,500 globally. We love the fact that customers can look online, but the beauty of it is as well that it reduces time and stress for your front desk team. And um, it's really useful for routine appointments like dental exams, which we'll hear a bit more about in a moment. But it frees up the receptionist time so they can focus on through um, emergency. So I'm particularly excited um, about one of the teachings and expertise today um, because in clinic, I emphasise with the fact that there's uh, a lot to handle and there's many hats that are worn. So hopefully um, this will be really invaluable to you and, and help you with your marketing efforts. But before I hand over to Rhonda, just some housekeeping points to share with you. This webinar is going to run for approximately one hour with time for Q&A at the end. If you have a question or a comment, feel free to use the Q&A feature or chat function at the bottom of your screen. We are still waiting on approval from RAID for one hour of the credit, and um, so apologies for the delay with this. Um, if you've joined us today, you will receive information soon about your certificate once we get approval. So without further ado, um, it's a pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Rhonda Bell. Hi, everyone. Thank you. And, you know, what a better example of technology just absolutely kicking us in the teeth today than this one, right? And I'll actually be talking about some of that. So I promise we didn't plan it as part of the lesson plan, but it dovetails perfectly. So I guess that's a great way to just kind of have a little bit of an icebreaker. Um, I do wanna invite you to ask questions as we go. Um, Ashley is gonna uh, gently interrupt me and hopefully not totally disrupt me. Um, and I can answer some questions as we go. If I get off track, then welcome to one of my presentations. So. I want to give you a little bit of information about myself. My name is Rhonda Bell. Um, I'm a CVPM by trade. I It's been a little more than 15 years that I've been in veterinary medicine as a uh, practice manager running hospitals, really doing a bad job with marketing and social media and promotion because I was too busy running the hospitals and doing all the things. Um, as, after I left veterinary practice um, from an illness, I focused more on what I could do to help veterinary practices kind of just do it a little bit better. One of my, my um, I guess my strengths is that I can see patterns and systems and efficiencies. And I really want to focus and help veterinary practices put those patterns and efficiencies into place to try to just make things a little bit easier for themselves. Um, no, nobody wants to recreate a wheel every single time. 
So I try to help in that area and marketing is where I found my passion because I discovered that I just love business and I love small business and I love growing business and brands and helping practices just kind of promote themselves. Ultimately, it comes down to the teams and that's where my heart is. And you guys can't pay your teams more if you're not making more, right? So we got to kind of have to massage that whole cycle. So that's where I ended up in marketing um, and then opening my own company. And so we do that and we help companies and businesses and brands. So I'm also a master life coach. Um, I'm a certified compassion fatigue professional. I went through a lot of that in my career without even realizing it because I was kind of um, blind to some of the symptoms and signs. And it all dovetails into the marketing side of things because if you don't have a cohesive culture and a cohesive brand within your practice, it's actually going to show in the things that you try to do in your social media, in your marketing, in your interactions with your clients, even in your interactions with each other on the team. So it's just going to kind of, that culture is going to ooze. So a lot of what we talk about and what we do has to be built from within. That brand message has to be built from within before we can push it out. So we're going to dig into some of that. Um, I have been married to my husband for 28 years. I got a lot of kids, got some grandkids, got a lot of things going on, but my passion really truly is building businesses, promoting businesses, you know, like Ashley, helping people like her figure out social media and how to do her job and get that practice promoted in a way that is effective, that reaches your clients and educates them. So let's get into this. So we are going to get our dental brain on, okay? We're talking about a dental month launch. Now, the, the trick is, and the little bit of a plot twist is, is the program that I'm going to show you today, the system that I'm going to encourage you to start for your practice, basically is just an SOP that you can apply to any plan. So say you want to bring in a new product, say you want to do a, a theme of the month, whatever it is, you can plug and play this program for that. But we're going to focus on dental month, one, because it's really easy and February is coming up and there's time to get it going. Um, it is a great time to promote your services, but to promote great pet health care, dental health care. So let's talk about that in that context, but just kind of keep it in the back of your mind that we can apply it to anything. So how do you bring in a product? Like what is your process in your practice? And this is a, a safe, no judgment zone. What is your process for bringing in a product? Um, or a service. So I've had experience as a practice manager where I've had owners go to a conference and hear a talk on something great and come back and say, okay, we're going to do this now and go do it. And that's about all I get in prep work. That's about all I get in education. That's about all I get. I have to go pursue the training on the product. I have to go figure out how to get things organized and coordinated. And it's a cumbersome program to try to launch when it just gets dropped in your lap without any kind of plan to actually promote it. So, and that's my truth. I've also had other times where we did have a little bit more opportunity to plan ahead, plan the trainings, plan the marketing, plan the approach. Um, and it did go a little bit smoother, but we did have some areas that we failed. So I want to be very transparent in my experiences, but also help you try to realize, oh, maybe I'm setting myself up for a little bit of failure here. Um, so think about your process. Think about what it is that you do as a practice or as a leader in your practice to either help or hurt your product launch process. So let's get started with that. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Again, technical difficulties. Here we go. So. I like to start with the lunch and learns, and I know that seems very basic, but there is a tremendous amount of value that you get from reps. I love reps. They are right up there. And whenever I think about the, the tremendous value of assets within the practice for practice management, it's your team, it's your clients, and it's your reps. So your reps are as invested in your success as you are, because if you're not successful, then they're not successful. They're not making money and they're not coming back to your practice. So they literally have skin in the game with you, with your practice success. So with that, elicit their help, ask them to support you in these efforts. So lunch and learn is a, is a great place to start. There's a lot of value there. They answer questions. They can give you brochures. A lot of them already have created some social media assets. 
um, that they can provide that can kind of help you do some of the marketing. Um, if you do this lunch and learn and go through these discussions and when they come back, they look at it and go, okay, but what's going on? Why, why aren't we, what, why aren't we having more success with this? Right? So here's some pros of the lunch and learns in terms of team training. You have an industry expert that is handy right then and there for questions. They are expert on that product or that service. You can get immediately help on identifying use cases. So you can actually give them samples of um, patients that you have that may or may not be great candidates for these products or these services or whatever. Um, you can also ask for tactics and you can practice and you can do role playing with that expert, that rep with you to train your team on how to do this. Um, when you're giving, doing lunch and learns, um, and you may call it something else, that's what I refer to it as, you can get your team involved and you can get that early adoption for this program. I will tell you, I had less success doing lunch and learns where the team was less involved or not as available. Maybe not everybody was there because they were off that day or whatever. It was really hard to get team buy-in or adoption and get them to actually be the advocates for that program because they didn't have the initial information. So that leads me to some of the cons of this, of doing lunch and learns and some of the ways that we kind of shoot ourselves in the foot. So team members that are working that day, they get to hear the lunch and learns. But if you're still seeing appointments and you're still doing client care and patient care, then they're distracted. And if they are listening while working, they aren't really listening to learn. They're listening to be present, but they may not have good recall of what it is that you're trying to teach them about this new product or service. And in this case, it's going to be, what are you doing for dental month? What are the, the highlights? What are the points that you're trying to make? Um, they're just kind of half listening because they're more focused on patient care as they should be. Um, so when you are actually considering bringing in a product or service, consider that, really block that time for the initial training. Your team is going to be a great asset for adoption and promotion to your clients, but they're not going to do much if they don't know what to say and they're insecure about it um, because they were distracted, right? So, um, and then employees that are off for that day, either you've got to call them in on a day off, which kind of sucks, right? Or they have to come in um, and be distracted because they want to go do other things or they just miss it all together. And then they've got secondhand knowledge from the expert, maybe from another team member who was half listening. So you're just kind of setting them up for failure because they're not getting as much as they can from that initial lunch and learn. Um, so we do all that. We set ourselves up for all of that. And then our reps check back in and go, hey, how's it going or what's going on? And you're like, yeah, this isn't working so good. Um, so when you get asked that, or when you go back and you look at it, well, why didn't this launch go good? We did a lunch and learn. We tamed the, or sorry, we trained the team. Um, maybe we did a couple of social media posts. Why? Why didn't we have better success? Well, there's some answers that I've been told um, and that I actually had for myself as a manager. I would blame the product. Um, it was a dud or it didn't do what we thought it would do. Our clients weren't interested in it. Um, our team didn't buy in, they wouldn't promote it, they wouldn't talk about it to the clients. There was also no plan for telling the, the patients, owners, what it was. Um, we couldn't defend what we were trying to do because we didn't have that initial, that additional, um, I guess, information. We felt insecure. I personally can remember going into exam rooms where we were talking about a particular product and I could answer that first line of questions and be, be really, really confident. Um, but if they dug any deeper or had any additional questions, I would be like, oh, deer in the headlights, you know? And so sometimes we're setting our teams up for that kind of stuff. Um, and then we have no marketing or promotion plan in place to help support the team. Your team should not be your primary source of marketing information. They already have a lot to do, a lot going on. The team needs to be the reinforcement of the brand message that you have for that marketing um, strategy for that, that dental month or, you know, a do dental chew or whatever it is that you're going to bring in. So keep that in mind. We, we put a lot of onus on our teams to be successful at selling this new product or service. And we also put it into that small block of time 
that they have with the client in an exam room. So if we think of every product and service that we have in our practice, and we're expecting our reception team and our technical team to be promoting that and talking about it to the clients, when do the clients ever get to tell us what's wrong with their pet? Like there's a lot to talk about. And we get that that overwhelm of information and our clients aren't, we're not doing a, a good service and we're not educating our clients in a way that's going to actually help them make better pet parent decisions. So we need to have our marketing in play, our SOP in play, that's going to allow us to have multiple channels talking for us at the same time in different ways. So it hits different people at different times. And I know that seems like a lot of moving parts, but a lot of you as practice owners and managers, I guarantee you, you kind of already have those parts. You just may not be utilizing them or thinking about them in terms of a strategic package or a system. So we're going to dig into some of the systems that we do um, to, to kind of put that all together. So let's think about last year for dental month. And again, I'm, I personally... I believe dental is year round, but I love the fact that we have earmarked February for dental month because it really gives us an opportunity to promote and push. And there's a ton of resources around us in social media land that support this. So you can kind of, you don't have to create everything yourself. So it's a big time saver. Um, so I am a fan of the themes of the month and social media holidays, but I do believe from patient care, just, you know, my own personal non-veterinary opinion that, you know, dental care needs to be year round and using some of these resources, you can still implement that. But let's think about dental month. So last year, how did you promote dental month? What did you do? What were the steps did you that you took to make sure that your clients knew it was dental month or that dental month was coming? You know, did you look at it three months before and start chattering about it and talking about it? Or did you do like, you know, here we are on the, the 19th of January and we're going into dental month. So we've got, you know, a few days until it's time for um, dental month to start. So did you plan then? What are some of the things that you did? And then did you offer a discount? You know, what was the plan? What was it you were offering? What was it you were saying? What were you, what was, what were you talking about? Other than the importance of dental care. So did you have a, a, dental choose that you gave a discount on? Did you give a discount on the services? What was it that you were doing? Um, and then how did you do it? How did you connect with your clients? How did you tell them whatever it was you were doing, your plan? Did you email them? Did you text them? Did you go on social media? What were the things that you did? Now, if you don't do dental month and you want to just provide education, how do you promote it? What's your mode of communication to just promote educational topics around dental health? What is your pattern? What kind of consistency do you have with it? Do you have a plan um, or do you kind of do it as you think about it? Maybe situations or patients come up in the practice um, and you kind of, you know, off the cuff, promote about it or talk about it because there's a scenario happening that you can share. Um, how often do you write blogs about this or do you create social media around it? How often do you send text messages to your clients or how often do you update your on hold messaging um, or do you send him emails? There's a lot of things that we have at our ready that we probably just don't think about as often. Hey, Rhonda. Yes, ma'am. We've got two questions. Yes. Bring it. Yeah. Our dental procedures are booked months out at any given point, so we have a hard time promoting it because we can't get patients in very soon. How can we still promote dental month while addressing this concern? Then you probably would not be a good candidate for having a dental special, or you could create some sort of dental special that is allowed year round um, in honor of dental month. Maybe they have to um, use a certain promo code or whatever to be able to, to benefit from that. The other thing is, is you can focus more on the education around it um, you could also set blocks in your time that you are going to create opportunities for these particular appointments to be brought in. So there are a few choices. I'm not a big, huge fan of blocking the appointment book. 
Um, but if you are going to really promote dental month, then that may be an asset that you put into play for yourself. That way you are easy to do business with and your efforts are rewarded with the appointments. You can't set yourself up to encourage appointments and then be like, yep, we don't have any. So, you know, create opportunities for your clients to, to be successful with that. Um, but yeah, I would probably, if it were me, honestly, I would focus more on the education and the opportunities of, you know, you've got geriatric, geriatric pets, you've got all these different dental components that you can have that conversation and talk about what's going on with dental month without actually offering um, a discount or anything like that. And what was the other one? Yeah. Um, so it's three questions in one, but I think they're all relevant. So you can, I'll ask all of them and then you can answer them. Okay. Uh, what is the best practice to promote dental month? When do you start promoting? What is the most efficient way to do the promotion? Um, well, I'm going to teach you the best efficient way in this talk. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you my best advice on how to utilize multiple chains of technology and communication to promote it. Um, the best practice is, you know, that is really, it's kind of one of those, it's a simple question with a complicated or complex answer. There is no one best practice other than have a plan and be consistent. So strategize what it is you want to talk about and what it is that you think your clients need to know. And if you don't know what your clients need to know, ask your receptionist. They're the ones that can give you that list of frequently asked questions that they hear all the time about dentistry, pet dentistry, scheduling appointments, any of that stuff. Those are things that you need to start talking about and educating on. Um, that has a twofold um, solution for your, your team. One, it's going to clear up a lot of those redundant questions, because if you're already answering some of those FAQs on your on-home messaging and your text messaging and your email messaging on your mobile apps and on your um, appointment schedulers and all of those things, then people are going to be less likely to call the front desk and tie them up with redundant questions. So that would be something that I recommend considering. And we're going to get into more of that. Um, and then I, I think I got it. Question one was best practice. Question two was, oh, how far out? Again, I think the, I think dental month talking about it at least two or three months ahead of time. You can start anytime though. There is no like, well, it's too late. I can't do it. Like you literally can start today and start really promoting dentistry. But I would caution you. I wouldn't necessarily worry about how far in advance. I would worry about letting it die at the end of February. Don't stop dental month at the end of February. Continue the conversation, continue the educational pieces, March, April, May, all throughout the year. But maybe you're going to do less. Maybe you're not going to be as focused on dentistry, but maybe you're still going to post about it once or twice a week or write a blog post every two or three, you know, skip every two or three. And maybe that one, that blog post is about dentistry. So continue the compassion um, and the, the, um, emphasis on dentistry throughout the year. We don't want it to look like to our clients, oh, they're just trying to make money on dentistry and they're jumping on the bandwagon. No, dentistry is important to us. We want to assign the proper importance by promoting it throughout the year. Does that make sense? Hopefully. <laughs> so I, are there any more questions or I'm going to keep plugging along here? Okay. I'm keep going. Okay. So I am a huge fan, like I said, of systems and plug and play strategies. There are so many things in our careers in the veterinary practice that we cannot account for, you know, like today with tech support issues and things that just happen. And we just kind of have to adapt and overcome. There are other places in the practice, in our management, in our leadership roles that we can plan out and we can have protocols in place that allow us to be ready to move forward with things. We, we should not have to stop and rethink of how we're going to do stuff every single time we want to do something. So I like to kind of take a inventory of my digital assets and how it, what I want to promote and how I want to promote it. Technology is a great way to do that. It's, you know, you, it's more than just Facebook and Instagram. We don't realize when we think about technology or digital, we always think, oh, well, Facebook and Instagram or our website. And those are just some of the tools. 
Um, you know, there are other social media platforms that I, that I love to utilize for promotion of these types of things, but you also have your text messaging. You know, one of the often overlooked amazing assets in a practice that we don't even think about is on-hold messaging. And I don't want anybody to answer me, but, you know, silently raise your hand. My heart will fill you. When's the last time you heard your on-hold messaging or updated your on-hold messaging? I mean, do you do it every month? Is it, does it seasonally change where whatever's going on for you that month or that quarter, it actually is reflected in your on-hold messaging? Then to take it a step further, does your on-hold messaging also kind of reflect what you're talking about on social media? You know, does your text messaging that goes out to your clients, your reminder systems that go out, does that also kind of match what's being talked about on social media? Or is it kind of everything is its own little island and all the messages are kind of different. So you're just hitting a wide swath of topics. You know, it's, I like having the strategy. I like having the cohesive message because your clients may or may not hear it on one channel, but they may hear it from another. So making sure that what we're trying to express to our clients and teach them about the various topics that we find are important, that's, it, having that consistent message is going to be the best way to deliver that. So um, put technology to work for you. You have websites, you have the ability to have blog posts. I will tell you, going back to our reps and our assets, you know, a lot of the content that we can get, you don't have to create it yourself. Um, you know, the thought of doing social media and digital marketing back then when I was managing was overwhelming so much so that I just didn't do it. Like I just found every other thing that I could do before that, because I would sit down in front of a computer screen and there's just this white page. I don't even know where to begin. Right. So your reps, your industry partners, the people who are promoting these products and services, they have assets. They have this stuff already created because it's in their best interest to have the sales pitch ready. So ask them for it. Ask them to write you a blog post. They probably already have the content that can be a blog post. You know, ask them um, to create social media content for you. Ask them to write a few captions for you. you. They know their product better than you know their product, but it's in both of your interests to partner on how you talk about that product. So ask them for that information. They have sales copy. Don't forget your phones. You know, consider your text messaging opportunities, um, your on-hold messaging, any apps that you have. Are there opportunities within those pieces of technology that you can update? Um, I know on-hold messaging is, is a quick one. Um, and I really harp on it because it's one that we just don't think about. I remember my practice and it, I cringe now just to even think about it because it, I never could get the owners to really buy into how important having custom messaging was, right? Um, and so we had that really grating, annoying music. So whenever, you know, the client would be put on hold, it was just like this screechy elevator music. I actually had people that would complain about it and we just never put the energy into fixing it. And what an easy fix that would have been um, and a tremendous marketing tool. And it's just like, oh, why didn't I do that? Um, also go on and look at your appointment booking stuff. So you, there are apps, there are widgets, there are programs that you can set appointments, um, make it easy for your clients to book those appointments from your website and from the phone. I also want you to go in and test those, make sure they work. Um, I can't tell you how many times we, I go and test things on clients' websites and it doesn't go anywhere or you get an error page or, you know, it just doesn't work. And I come back and I let them know, hey, we need to go test this button. It doesn't work. It doesn't go anywhere. And then they start wondering, well, how long has it been like that? How many clients didn't get to book an appointment because it didn't work or there was a link broken or something happened? Um, so go periodically and test your technology and make sure it's working and make sure it's looking like what you want it to look like. Um, and then also focus on team training. It is important. Team training is, is vital and make training intentional. Block the time, dedicate the time, make it important. Make sure everyone is a part of it. Make sure everyone gets the information firsthand and that they can ask questions. I would also encourage you to do more than one learn, lunch and learn or have that rep come back 
maybe not for a formal second lunch and learn, but have them come back to answer additional questions, to reinforce the learning, um, just to make sure that, you know, the product launch or the service launch or the dental month launch is ready. Now, I will say, as much of a fan of technology as I am, technology can become a barrier to communication and it can kind of block what we're trying to do with our clients. So pay attention to if you're putting that too much emphasis on it and it's hard to reach you. So what comes to mind when I when I say that is, you know, the, the phone systems where it's an automated system and you can't ever get to a person because you've got to go through this and got to go through that and, and hit this button, hit that button. We don't want technology to be a barrier. We want it to be a, an aid. We want it to serve our clients in a way that makes it easier for them to do business with us. But if we put so much in the way that it makes it hard to do business with us, one, we're doing ourselves a disservice, but we're also irritating the client who's going to go away and go to someone who has a more personable, easier way to do business, if that makes sense. So let's build a reusable marketing protocol. Okay. This is going to be your, your SOP. And to start that, we have to have a brand message and a brand message is about anything that you're doing. So for this one, we're going to talk about dental month, but this would be um, a brand message around anything. I mean, it, this is your plug and play part, right? You need to define your brand message. You need to make sure that what is being communicated is communicated clearly to in-person clients standing in front of you, as well as online clients who are looking at it via your website or via apps or via um, hearing it on on hold messaging or seeing it on social media. We want to make sure that the, the tone and the messaging is consistent. Um, we also want to make sure that we're reflecting the personality of the practice. So there's an overall practice brand, and then there's a product service brand, and they're all kind of just living in that space together. So we want to make sure we define that. Once we define it, that's what we teach our team. That's then what becomes that rally cry. So the questions to ask when you're defining a brand message or dental month brand message or whatever, what are you doing? You know, what is it that you're trying to accomplish here? Who are you doing it for? Why are you doing it? And how are you going to do it? So those seem pretty simple, but they can get complex. I want you to focus on keeping them a little bit more simple. But once you kind of have them set up, you can plug in multiple ways of answering these questions. So let's apply this to dentistry. So this is kind of my little brand message planner. Um, I literally will scratch this out on paper. I can also, I have um, Excel spreadsheets where I create different scenarios of what it is we're building. So, you know, what are we doing? We're going to provide dental cleaning discounts. This is just an example. Who are you doing it for? Um, existing patients that are seven years or older. So I picked existing patients because this allows us to already have that exam on file, hopefully, and it's current. So we don't have to get into the nitty gritty of, well, if they've been in within the last six months or have been, we don't want to complicate it. We want to try to keep it as simple as possible. And we don't want to have a bunch of barriers up that prevent clients from wanting to come in and take advantage of these services we're offering. So position it in a way that is, um, that does allow them to seek care. So we want existing patients that are seven years or older. Um, why are you doing it? We're observing Dental Health Month, but we're also encouraging older pet dental care. Okay. Um, and then how are you going to do it? Well, we're going to schedule special appointments for exams and we're going to block appointments for cleanings. Okay. Now your answers are going to be different based on your practice, based on what you're doing. Like the question I answered previously, you know, being booked out so far in advance, maybe that's, this part isn't an option. Maybe your answer to how are you going to support um, dental health month in older pets is you're going to focus two or three social media posts per month on geriatric dentistry. Okay. That's totally appropriate. But having a plan for how you're going to do it is important. So we're going to put all this together into a sentence or one or two sentences, and this becomes our brand message. So we're going to provide the best dental care possible to improve our patients' health and lives by supporting a year-round 
dental program philosophy. Okay, seems legit. So this is for a practice who's not going to do dental month and they're going to support it throughout the year. So we're going to use this formula to build a brand message for any product or service. So we have a new service offering, a new technology that you adopt, new products. Basically, you and go back and you answer those same questions. What are you doing? Who are you doing it for? How are you going to do it? So this now comes, we break this into two messages. It's the same feeling, but we have two, two messages. The team training message, this is what you're going to be telling your team. In honor of Pet Dental Health Month, we're offering a discount on senior pet dental procedures. We are booking examinations to review the patient health, the need for blood work, and the recommended dental procedure. We will be utilizing text, email, social media, websites, online appointment booking, and updating our on-home messaging. So now your team knows what you're doing, who you're doing it for, why you're doing it, and how you're going to do it. Okay. So you've got better buy-in because they understand all the different parts that your practice is going to touch in order to get this one message across. Now, the client-facing message is in honor of Pet Dental Health Month, we're offering a discount on your senior pet's dental cleaning. Let's discuss your pet's pearly whites during their exam and go over our, recommend, our recommendations for your fur kid. Give us a call or text us at, and then leave the information. Use our online appointment scheduler to get on the books. This program is running during the month of February, so don't wait too long. So you can have this kind of client-facing message. You can create it three months in advance, provide the opportunity for them to book those appointments, block those appointments. You don't have to do it this way, but basically you're telling your clients what it is you're doing, who you're doing it for, why you're doing it, and how you're going to do it. So I hope this kind of makes some sense for you. So we're going to use the brand message that we just built, and now we're going to plug it into a strategy using our technology toolbox. Okay. So these are my, there's, there's a lot of opportunities out there, but these are some of the ones that I see the most often used in practices and by practices. So website blogs, articles, um, sometimes they just update the homepage, which is completely appropriate. But um, updating the website and making your information searchable can get a lot of information out there. Um, and then using your in-practice apps, making sure that those are updated, get with the companies that provide your apps and make sure that your particular brand messaging is there or that you know how to use that app to support what you're trying to do. So maybe it's time for a quick little lunch and learn or um, rehash of information Maybe it's a quick Zoom call with your, your app rep to re-educate your team on how your app works. What are the resources? What are the updates? What are some of the cool things that are happening with that that can then be used in your marketing plan? Your social media content. What are you going to build? What are the things you're going to talk about? How often are you going to post it? Who's going to do it? Um, planning that stuff out will make it way, way, way more likely to happen than not having a plan. Um, and getting people on your team to help you and to kind of be your allies for creating that stuff will help a lot also. Um, test your online appointment scheduling. Make sure that it's going where it needs to go, saying what it needs to say, that it works, that the appointments come through, and that you have somebody on the other end receiving that information and responding. I have seen several times where, you know, the, the practice thinks that that system is working um, and maybe the email changed or maybe something happened, links broke, whatever the case may be, but the client's information about that appointment is actually not going to the practice um, or they're never being responded. The client never gets a response from anybody, um, so they don't ever know if it worked. So make sure that that process is all the way complete and that it works the way you think it's going to. Um, the other thing that I've seen used that is valuable is in-practice TV loops. So I have some practices that create their own instead of buying other um, assets from other companies. They just have their own YouTube channel that they cycle through and they create their own videos. I mean, what better way to have a specific brand message than to have your own um, RVT or your own doctor or your own team members talking about important topics that are going on within the practice? During February, we're going to be focusing on dentistry. So maybe we're showing procedures. Maybe we're having the um, front office 
explain the booking process or explain how to, you know, how to read an estimate, whatever the case may be, kind of bringing the clients into the fold and educating them on the things that sometimes cause confusion during dental month. Again, your on-hold messages, your text and your email messaging, make sure those are updated and ready. And then also don't forget about your online pharmacies and the products that you sell within the practice. Um, there are opportunities here for additional revenue, additional sources of making product recommendations. Um, so whenever you're doing dental month, kind of shop through your own pharmacy. What are products that you can recommend? What are things that you can create social media posts around or um, make sure that are mentioned in your, your um, email marketing that goes out or your website blogs? You know, when you link back to products, you know, here's my top 10 favorite dental products and they just happen to be from your online pharmacy. Um, so kind of always bring it back to ways that are gonna support your practice and ways that are gonna support your revenue sources. Another thing that you can do if you don't have an online pharmacy is you can become an Amazon affiliate and pick, choose products that way, use your affiliate links and push people back to the products that you do support and that you do recommend. Um, if you're not making recommendations for products, they're going to go to Google. Somebody's going to recommend it. So be thoughtful in what you do recommend and what you think um, would benefit your patients and your, your clients make those recommendations, make it easy for them. Remember, always make it easy to do business with you. So here's a technology prep checklist. Um, I'm a big checklist person. And so whenever I am creating a, a situation, I wanna make sure that I have all my reps contact info. I wanna make sure that if, you know, the, the concept being that if something goes wrong in the middle, I know who to call and who to get help from immediately. So do that before, do that before you, you know, as you're getting started to do this, this dental launch, you know, all your apps, all your, your on-hold messaging, all your dental products, all of the, um, anything that's going to go into your dental program, have the reps, names, numbers, and emails ready. Just have them on an Excel list, whatever, have them handy. So you don't have to go, Oh, who is this person? What is the, uh, I need to get this fixed. You know, it's, it's the hindsight part of it. So have that list ready, have your marketing resources ready, um, ask your rep for the blog post, ask them for the social media assets, ask them for all of those things ahead of time. And that way you can review them. You can edit them, change them, whatever you need to do to make them fit for you, but get that stuff just together, save it. So all you have to do is either send it to your website company and they can upload it for you. Or if you do that yourself, you can go in and just publish that blog post and you've got it. Um, make sure that your communication channels are working and updated. So again, messaging, text, all of that stuff. Then I go into my on-hole messaging. I listen to what is currently there, what is playing, what it is I think we need and what I want it to say for this particular program. Um, you probably want to think ahead for some of that part of it, because I don't know how nimble your on-home messaging company could or would be. So think about that, you know, as things are coming up in your planning, you may need to give them a little bit of time to get that messaging um, updated. I will say with dental month, it's extremely popular. People are very, you know, versatile, they understand it. So a lot of the on-home messaging will have some dental um, problem messaging, but if you want something custom about your particular program or something, you know, custom for your practice, give them a little bit of a heads up, but think about what you want that to say. And then make sure your appointment scheduling software is working. Make sure the team is trained on how you want them to handle these requests. So this is where it kind of goes back to what I said before in that, that previous question is, you know, what are you going to do about appointments? What are you going to do if your marketing works? You know, I mean, it's ideal, but are you prepared for the clients to actually make those appointments and to have these conversations and to want to get into this? So make sure that that training is done. Make sure your front staff knows, hey, we're forward booking. We're doing dental month in February, but we don't have an appointments until May. So we're actually going to allow this promo to run for six months. You know, whatever it is that needs to happen to make sure that your clients are being cared for 
make sure your team knows what those answers are. We do not want to create a situation where we get a bunch of angry clients and your team is confused and getting battered left and right because they don't have the, the clear answers to keep communication open. And then also create that social media calendar. I know that sounds very daunting. I promise it isn't. If you get a blank calendar out and you think about all of these things that you have, it's easy to plug in some of the this information. You know, you can talk about your text messaging. Um, that's a social media post. You can talk about your, um, do you know we have email reminders? Are you getting our emails? That's a social media post. You can take that blog post that you get your rep to write for you, and you can take each paragraph of that blog post or each title within that blog post and create a social media post from that. Those are social media posts. Um, you can share that you have an online pharmacy. You can take each of those product recommendations that you went through to, to pick. Those are social media posts. Um, you can mention that you have um, an app that it makes it easy to see your pet's records. Here you go. That's a social media post. You know, do you know that you can schedule an appointment online with us? That's a social media post. So there is a lot that you have that you already know about that you can sit down and map out. It's just when you think about it in the whole, like if you say, okay, go, go put on social media, go talk about dental. You're like, uh, and that's not even talking about the dentistry side of things. That's just the stuff that we have just from our technology that we have available to us that we can talk about on social media. So sprinkle in some dentistry too, and that would make a really good dental month, wouldn't it? So plan it out. Um, the next step that I didn't actually put in this that I, I wish I would have now that I'm thinking about it is go into your, um, your social media platforms, you know, Facebook and Instagram are the go-tos. They, they have meta in the background. Meta is, has a planner. And so you can actually pre-schedule this stuff so you can map it out. You can have your team or you create the content, you know, get your little copy, your wording, get the pictures and map it out, pre-schedule it. So that way you don't have to think about it. It's already scheduled. They're going to drop Monday, Wednesday, and Friday or whatever days you want them to drop. And it's already done. You don't have to do it every day and think about it every day. So that was our technology prep checklist. So now let's get into our launch to-do list. So I want to get you started and kind of get you thinking about some of the creative things you can do to launch this um, dental month and, you know, any month going forward. So we want to do the team trainings. We want to do lunch and learns, meetings, follow-up trainings. You know, I would love if you would, um, in the chat, put in other ideas, like share with everyone. There's like 110 of us here. Share your ideas for what you do when you're about to launch a product. Let's use the, the collective brain trust to support one another. So I'm going to start us, but I would love for you guys to, to help each other and talk in, in the chat and kind of um, build upon it. So you've got your brand message, write it and teach it. You know, how many of you do brand messaging? How many of you do brand messaging and didn't realize it was brand messaging? You know, do you already do something like that? Or how many want to create a situation where you do that? Um, create your service offer or your promotion, or it's okay to not have an offer. It's okay just to be focused on education. You do not have to discount things to make it count, okay? So create your service, your offer, your promotion, your educational platform, whatever it is that you're talking about, you know, what are you going to, what's that topic going to be? Look and find your related products online that you offer, grab the links, you know, and if you don't have the online pharmacy, go to Amazon, that kind of thing. Where are some other sources that you can support um, finding those links and finding those products? What are some other places that you guys have used? Um, another thing that you could do for links and supporting your, your information and blog post blog post is go to your industry, um, resources. You can actually go to the product website and pull some information from there. You can go to industry partners. You can go to like the AVMA, some of the, the resources that we use to validate some of the medicine behind what we're doing. It's not just a money-making venture. This is a healthcare venture. So provide some of that information that supports that. 
um, the blog post, write or borrow one. And a lot of times in your website technology, there are libraries. And so there are already resource libraries. Shop through what's already on your website. A lot of people may not even realize that they've got articles, pet care articles and pet education pieces. So shop through and find the ones that are relevant to what you're doing for dental month or whatever and use them, repost them, reshare them, put them out there, build social media content from them. So a lot of that stuff may already be written and you may already have it on your website and just, you know, have kind of forgotten about it. Um, I love video and it is something that really gets a lot of play. It's highly, highly regarded in algorithms and search and all of that. So record an eight to 10 minute video summarizing that blog post, or if you're not going to do the blog post, summarize your brand message. What is that you're trying to accomplish with dental month? Why is it important? What are you going to do to support it? You know, just you can come up with any number of topics to think to, to discuss in this video, but doing an eight to 10 minute video, putting it on YouTube, playing it in the practice, sending it out in links, linking it to the blog post, putting it in emails, sending it out to your clients will give that personal touch. And they're going to see the passion that you have for the care that you're providing for your patients. And they will um, be more likely to respond. This doesn't have to be you as the practice owner or you as the practice manager. Um, you could just have a really friendly receptionist or a technician or anybody in the practice that is, you know, camera friendly and wants to get out there and do it. Um, you could also record or edit out some of the snippets from that eight to 10 minute video, or you could create additional TikToks and reels and shorts and that sort of thing that you could also share on social media that link back to that video, link back to that blog post, link back to some of the stuff that you're doing. Um, promoting dental month. And then again, create that social media calendar, use the assets that you've been given, collect them, keep them in one place so they're easy to find and create that calendar and then update your on-home messaging. So we've gone over your technology. We've gone over some of the plans and strategies to actually have an SOP. This is where we really need to prioritize team training. I will tell you that I don't, I don't believe that it ends all with your team, but not having your team prepared to support what you're trying to do with your dental month will kill it. <laughs> um, there's just no quicker death than not having team buy-in. So a team training rally is really the best tool that you have. This can be the lunch and learn. I actually use a lunch and learn as my initial fact finding team training, we actually go back and do a team rally where it's okay, we're going to take what we know from the lunch and learn, we're going to take what we know from the marketing plan that we've put into place. And now we're going to get everybody on board and we're going to get those creative conversations happening about what can we do to build this. So one of my favorite things with our team is when we have that creative meeting and some of the ideas that the team comes up with far exceeds what I could dream up. And it is so much fun to see the TikTok ideas that come through or the, the blog post ideas that come through. So getting your team involved and getting them to be a part of what it is you're trying to accomplish with Dental Month, you would be amazed what they can come up with to support it. And on the selfish side of it, that means they can help you do it. It doesn't all fall on you. So you can get them to help with writing, you know, the blog post. Maybe you've got a budding writer who really enjoys writing and wants to be able to do that. Or maybe they like to write the Instagram captions or the Facebook copy, you know, any of that stuff. <clears throat> maybe you have someone who loves, or maybe they already are always on their phone and their camera, but maybe you can put them to work for you doing the social media. Maybe they can record the short videos or um, maybe you have budding actors who wanna be the face of it and do those summaries for you. So get your team involved in the creative marketing side of it, as well as the brand messaging. You know, you want to make sure everybody's kind of rowing the boat in the same direction, um, but really get them together. And that way you can build this. Again, giving them more than two weeks notice would be ideal. So having these planning meetings well in advance, I like to do them a quarter at a time. 
So I like to know what we're doing January, February, March. And then I like to know what we're doing April, May, June, because we can already be saying, hey, we're thinking about April. Yeah, we have dental month, but you know what would be really cute for Easter or spring or, you know, puppies and kitten season, you know, things like that. You already get them kind of thinking about some of the stuff that's coming forward. So keeping that in mind as well. Um, don't forget to use Facebook, Instagram to connect with your audience. It is one thing to just um, post and then never look back. I really would like for you to think about um, either assigning someone or multiple people to keep an eye out on what your clients are doing and reacting and responding to those posts. Um, if they're sharing pictures, maybe you, you ask them to share a picture of their pet's pearly whites and they do go love it, you know, go give a, go give a heart or a shout out or call them out by name. If it's a client, you know who it is, you know, engage with them and build that bond. So expect, um, expect a little bit of time and effort to go into that. But if you've got multiple people watching for this stuff and keeping an eye on it, they can either tell you, Hey, you know, so-and-so commented, and then, you know, to go respond or give them the access to be able to go do it. Um, set those guidelines, you know, all that fun stuff. You don't want people going rogue on your Facebook page, but with training, they know what to say. They know what to do. Um, again, use Facebook meta to schedule those posts and make sure that you are planning out far enough in advance that you're not just having to come up off the cuff and, and think about something. And then also all of those social media posts, all of those reels, all of those things, share those out. Don't just publish your blog post on your website and walk away put it on Facebook, link to it, tell people you did it, send it out in the email. Um, make sure that even in your on-home messaging, you say, hey, clients, do you know that we offer a lot of valuable information in our blog post on our website? Go visit and learn all about dentistry and your pet's dental care um, in our blog post. You know, you can say those things and update those messages and have that technology working in that circle for you. And then don't forget your related products. That's a good revenue source right there. Make sure you're putting that to work for you. So we're going to create the strategy. We're going to consider all the tools in our toolbox. You now have the tools for a plan for your practice. Use the digital tools that you have. Um, you can use these tips or not use these tips, however it's going to work for you. But use checklists. I love me a good checklist. Um, I think they have checklists for you. I think Ashley and... Um, and Pet Desk and Pet Story put a couple of checklists. They, they asked me to send a few things over to try to just get you started with what do you need for tech prep? What do you need for communication prep? What do you need to build that brand message? Um, things that you can remember to ask your reps for. Remember, put those guys to work. They want to work for your practice. They want to have a bond with you. They want for your practice to succeed. They're not just there to sell you stuff. They're there to sell you stuff that will make you successful because they're going to be successful. So work together in that partnership. The biggest thing that I can tell you as we wrap up is evaluate what it is that you're doing and change it as needed. No one plan is going to work for every single practice. So you need to look at the social media posts that you have. Are they working? Are they resonating? You know, look at that blog post. Is it taking way too much time to write a blog post and nobody's ever reading it? Okay, so maybe blogging's not the thing. Like, make changes. Also ask your reps to help evaluate some of the marketing changes. They have insight to what other practices are doing. Ask them what other practices are doing. Ask them what's working. Ask them what's not working. So partner together for that kind of stuff. Um, I am going to open it up for questions and answers. I want to see what you guys have been talking about in the chat. I am here to continue to chat and know um, that I just want to answer questions and, and help. Ashley, do we have any that? Yes. So okay. Valerie asked, um, how many Facebook posts are too many? I have one genuine post that comes out on at 8 a.m. each day. Is adding an afternoon post that is something pre-planned or sent from marketing in the afternoon too many? Is it too overwhelming for followers? Um, I don't know. Look at your analytics. So you can actually go in and look at those analytics on the backside of Facebook and on the business page in Meta. There's insights. 
and it'll actually tell you how many people are looking at those posts. It'll even tell you if they're male or female. I mean, it'll give you a lot of information. Before I change how many I'm doing, I would change the time of day that I'm posting them. I would mess with that. If you change too many things at once, you're not going to know what it was that was successful and what isn't. Um, I would consider where you're at in the United States or in wherever your time um, zone, because is eight o'clock something that people are getting ready for work? They're not going to look at it. Uh, maybe you need to hit it at noon where people are on their lunch break and they're more likely to look at social media. You know, things think of in terms of that. So it's not necessarily a how many times per day. It's what time per day and what time um, is going to be the most effective to reach them. Typically, lunch breaks and in the evening um, when people get off work is, is your ideal time. Eight o'clock, I would question if people are getting ready for school, getting ready for work, getting ready to head out the door. They're not going to see it. And then by the time your stuff shows up in their feed, there's a whole day's worth of stuff that filled in on top of it. So, you know, I would think of it in terms of that. What else do we have? Yeah, Debbie at Lakeshore, she actually asked, how can a pet desk help us market to our clients? Um, I would say I can answer this one because I work with <laughs> um, As far as the best way I've seen in clinic, when I used to do the social media aspect and all of the marketing for my practice, I loved the fact that we would send out mass messages so you can email all of your clients and let them know based off of if it's a senior dog. So we would always do like senior screens and we would market that and we'd have a discount for that every month. But for dental month, we would start sending them out two and a half months before February and let them know, request your appointment now and book that dental so that you can get in and here's the discount for it. So you are able to select so that the email goes to any dog over the age of seven or any cat that is over the age of seven or whatever it may be. So um, I'm also going to drop a demo link and we can get really into the nitty gritty, but if I did do that, I'd be here for an hour. So <laughs> there's, um, there's a few more questions. Um, I'm in charge of our social media and I have recently wondered what the best way is to reach our senior clients. Um, senior pets or senior clients. So the older pet owners is probably what we're talking about. Um, you know, social media. So if you think about it, you know, I, I don't have the statistics. I used to know the statistics. I haven't looked it up recently, um, but there is a much older demographic getting on social media, getting more comfortable with social media. I mean, honestly, that's where their grandkids are and wherever the grandbabies are, that's where the grandparents are going to be. So you are going to be able to see them, find them, and they're going to see your content. If you're consistent with what you're posting and the messaging you have, they're on social media. Um, you know, the, the big question right now, like with TikTok in particular, is people say, no, that's for a younger, a younger demographic, but it's really not. So there are people my age that are on TikTok, utilizing TikTok for the business part of it, but as well as just consuming the content. I mean, I find myself just scrolling through without even realizing what's happening. I just find myself looking at things. So, you know, don't, don't discriminate or pre-discriminate against your audiences on social media because they're probably already there and just talk to them like you would talk to anybody, like you would want to have that outreach. Um, but I suspect that they're already on your pages. But again, you can pull those insights and look and it'll tell you what age range your audience is that's in, engaging with your content. It'll tell you what their, what their age is. Perfect. And one more from Marissa. What's a good plan to follow up on a dental care later on dental care later on in the year during routine appointments, but not in February. So any other month but February. Right. So this is where Marissa, I think you should have that yearly plan. Just a, you know, a in January, we're going to talk about these three things. In February, we're definitely going to talk about dental and maybe these two things. March, we're going to talk about this. April, we're going to talk about this, that, and dentistry again. And then maybe in May, we're talking about, you know, two or three topics. We're getting ready for summer. Maybe we're talking about allergies and skin and, and summer travel. And then in June, we're talking about heat stuff. And July, we're going to talk about fireworks, you know, threats and um, summer safety and dentistry. And then, you know, so just keep bringing it up every couple of months in 
your digital work. So in your blog post, all you have to do again is go to that library or go to those assets, your blog library, um, and just find the posts that are related to dentistry. It doesn't have to be the same one every time. Talk about cats, talk about dogs, talk about, you know, really bad cases. There's, there's a lot of things that can come up about dentistry, um, but sprinkle it in every couple of months. That way it's not a February thing and you're reinforcing the messaging all the time. You could also have your um, on-hold messaging, tell your on-hold message provider, hey, I want this cycled into my messaging loop every two months or every three months. You know, you can provide, get um, support that way as well. I hope that helped. Yeah, and then there's one more. It's how does forward booking support dental health month? Um, so, it does in, in in my mind, I'll tell you what why a pause because basically this is where you can't wait until January 19th to talk about dental month. You know, this is that that year round um, program. So if you're going to really push the forward booking and and you are doing more forward booking because you're you just have no choice, um, make sure that you are backing up your marketing to you know, months in advance. And that way you can support it, talk about it, educate it, but be more ready for your dental month program. Um, this is where it gets a little tricky. And, and honestly, I got away from dental month and we focus more on the year round approach because as we got busier and as appointments booked out further and further and further, it got really hard to have the awareness months where we were setting aside appointments for it. Um, if, if I were doing that, like I said, I would focus on the educational component. So we're going to do a really strong educational program in February, but we can't really affect or change our appointment structure because we've already been booked out for months. So talking about it, educating about it, learning about it, um, you may have to step back and look at your appointment scheduling structure and, you know, are you effectively utilizing your appointments? You know, is your is your booking system, is your protocols behind, you know, your book, your appointment times, is that appropriate? I wouldn't have any way of knowing that, but kind of taking a step back, fresh eyes and auditing how you do your appointments, when you do them, how long they are, that kind of thing might be a good time to do that as well, just to make sure you are easy to do business with. Awesome. I think that's everything. Um, I just want to say thank you so much, Rhonda sharing your knowledge with us today. And we just really appreciate it. Um, I really struggled in clinic when I had to promote dental months. So it's yeah. really nice to hear you just give your advice and tips on social media um, and marketing itself. And if any, yeah, thank you. If anyone wants to learn more about Pet Desk or Vetstoria, um, I'm going to drop the links in the chat so you can feel free to request a demo. We could go over everything in 30 minutes um, and just as a heads up, this program has yet to be approved for one hour of CE credit in jurisdictions that recognize race approval. We apologize for the delay, but those of you that have joined this live talk will receive information soon about your certificates. All registrants will receive a recording of the presentation to watch on your own time. And thank you everyone for joining and we'll see you next time. All right, thank you everybody. And thank you, Vicki, for, for joining from afar from the UK. Thank you very much, it was brilliant, thank you. I'm glad to be <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Appreciate everybody. it. And now for Dental Month. <laughs>